Okay, this is Brooke Drum with PrinterBot, PrinterBot.com, and we're going to pick up with the build videos finally. One of the delays since the last video has been we've changed some parts, and so I'm going to kind of, before we get rolling on the upper assembly, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the new things that we've done and how we've accommodated those of you that have already printed yours and how that will work with the new parts. So, first things first, um, we left off and we had the bed mounted with the, uh, the heated board on top. And uh, the first thing we've done is, you can see here, I've got a smaller board. This is an old version, and you see how wide it is. Well, we have trimmed it down a little bit, and what we're trying to do is make it smaller. Um, and this isn't a big change. Uh, this was actually the original design. And if you look close in the videos, the printer bot was a little smaller to accommodate the six inch beds. Uh, but we, for the bot farm, for our bot farm here, we wanted to get going as soon as we can, and we didn't have the six by six beds made yet. So we put the eight by eight beds on here, and so we had to make this a little wider. Well, now we have the six by six beds. And by the way, the wider um, doesn't really work uh, that well because. It's really tight with the equipment that you have with these 10-inch rods. And then also, it doesn't even reach the sides. So the intended um, board that was always supposed to be on the printer bot is this one. And so this is the one that ships now. I think the rep wrappers even got uh, this smaller board. But so this small board um, looks like this. And it does accommodate the new, has uh, screw holes here for the 6x6 board. Now, funny thing about the 6x6 board, um, when we got this, there was a mistake. The printer bot logo was printed backwards. <laughs> so, if you uh, look in the mirror, it's correct. <laughs> but we went and just took it to a screen printer and we had a special etching ink and everything. We did our best to kind of, um, we spent a little extra money so that you could look at our logo, you could see that it's hot, and uh, you know, it's our little effort to make, make it good. Um, but uh, this isn't the uh, production quality of this, so next version will have this corrected. But anyway, it, it just works the same way. So as if you remember, um, I don't remember everything I said in the last video, but uh, that gap is for that. But one thing I did not show, and I thought I'd show real quick just to catch us up, is uh, some of the things that I missed. Anyway, so... Um, the thermistor is what needs to go on here, and the thermistor um, is a little, little bitty guy like that, and this is how it will come in the kit. And so, first things, um, we didn't put shrink wrap around this, so the first thing you want to do is just, if you have some Kapton tape or some sort of, uh, I don't know if you'd want to do electrical tape, it would probably work, it would, we just want to protect those joints, all right? And when we put this on, you know, we have some, it's going to sit right here. And if you'll notice, this gap goes all the way to here. So we have this much room to put our thermistor on. So I'm just going to put it somewhere over the logo here, right in the middle. And I'm just simply going to, this is a Kapton tape or polyimide, I think is how you say it. Um, I got a couple little squares of that ready. And so it's just pretty much going to go on there. This is funky tape. This, this tape has like strange and unusual properties. Um, it really survives heat very, very well. So uh, get some polyimide tape. Now I like, um, I like to uh, zip tie things together. So once you can kind of do your cable management later, but uh, I'm trying to remember if I even have, I'd at least zip tie this right here. You might even drill a couple holes there and have this wire affixed to the board so that the point at which, you know, when it goes back and forth, it's going to bend, and you don't want it bending right here. It's pretty solid, but you don't want to take any chances. So if I were you and on all my bots, I actually drill a couple holes there, put a zip tie, and affix this very, very solidly um, right here so that the, the point of, you know, stress is here, not here. So anyway, that's that's the printer board, or the printer, uh, not the printer board, but the the printer bot heated bed there, six by six, and the new the new board. 
Um, one other thing, you know, I had some people comment, you know, glass, aren't you sending glass? Well, I'm not going to send glass um, for a couple reasons. Number one, it's hard to ship. Number two, it cuts people. And I don't really want to assume that liability. So instead, um, it will work uh, if you put blue tape. And if you get blue tape, get the kind without writing on the blue. Um, this is some blue tape with writing on it. And that's junk. You don't want that. You just want the plain blue tape. You can print on blue tape. It's the first thing I printed on. Um, you can put it right on this board, um, but get the kind without any writing, just plain blue. You can put it across here, and you can actually print right on this surface, so it's not required that you have glass. The reason I like glass is, I don't know if you can see, but these boards aren't perfect. They're not going to, you can bolt them down on the corners, and they'll be almost perfect, but there's still going to be a slight bend, and when you go to do your print, you know, that slight bend the print head will be further away from um, the board and then it'll get to the top of the bend and it'll be close and then it'll be further away so that's problematic so that's the reason I use glass so you can go down to Lowe's or Home Depot or anywhere just your local glass shop and they'll cut you uh, you might even want to take your board and say I need exactly this now these are prone to snapping right here on the corners and uh, so what I use is we printed up some of these we call these glass tabs. Um, a better design would even be uh, with this corner cut off here. So you, you designers out there go crazy. Um, and so what this does is it's just the right height. And you know these printers are exact, but depending on the circumstances, you don't want to necessarily rely on the thickness being correct. So I'll even um, I'll fit these on the corners. And it, I've got holes here for you to use. In fact. That's the intended purpose of these holes. And actually, you can use a longer screw here and sneak these guys under here. So I'll put the files to what I've got, but you know your mileage may vary. If these holes are off at all, it won't really work. So those are left and right. And then up here, um, they get uh, pretty close. I don't even know if these are the right ones. But what's cool is um, when you tighten these down, you want to be gentle. You don't want to just tighten down, tighten, tighten, tighten. You'll hear a snap and you'll have broken glass. So you can see they don't really f sit flush, but it, the intention is for it to be the exact thickness of the glass plus the PCB so that it's completely flush on the bottom. So when you bolt that down, it'll just hold it down. So that is how I recommend using the glass with the printer bots. So get your own glass cut. Uh, this can be one of your first prints. You can put some tape down and make your own prints. They print like that. And uh, you can use these holes for your glass tabs. So that holds it down. And I can't stress enough to be very gentle. Um, there's give. You know, glass does bend, but you want it flat. So, you know, just be gentle. Tighten these down um, very carefully. And you're going to want to watch um, these bolt holes under here. Whatever bolt you use, make sure they're short because there's stuff under here that you don't want to hit. So mounting the glass works like that. And I'm not even going to demonstrate that here because I want to just keep moving. But I think that's enough explanation. I know some of you are going to be frustrated that we're not including these glass tabs, but you know I don't need 6,000 more things to print. And uh, different people do these do this different ways. I've seen people literally tape this down. They just tape it, which is, it'll work for a few prints. I've seen people um, build their own little tabs, and they'll just hold it down here and hold it down here, and they'll drill their own holes. You could do that on four sides. You really want this to be solid so that it doesn't move, because when it prints, if you get any of that, um, you'll get a weird uh, print so that is the glass and the glass tabs. Now the next thing I wanted to kind of catch us up with is pull this out so I'm not breaking the glass. The next thing I want to cover is a couple of other changes here. Now that we've got this um, this bed, this uh, print platform, um, some people call it the table, now that we have this thing that's n more narrow, um, you don't need all these rods so you can center them but you notice here I've swung this off to this side well I'll let you in on a little secret um, I'm going to uh, do a little laser cut 
and maybe you guys can think up something um, that would work here. But uh, I'm going to do, haven't done it yet, I'm going to do a little laser cut stand that's going to go here and hold your, um, I'm going to make a little uh, spool for the filament. And the filament will be here, kind of uh, sitting right here, a large roll. This is representational of a large roll of filament. And uh, it'll spool off and go into your, your thing. So I've hung these out to the side in preparations for the mount for the spool because spooling is something that will really mess up your prints if you're not careful. So that's the, how we're going to utilize this extra length that we've got here. So there's that. 